The Trans Am Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Three Dimensional Services Group. Prototype, production, proven. And by Pirelli. Power is nothing without control. Welcome to Daytona International Speedway for the final round of Trans Am 2018 presented by Pirelli. It's been an amazing season with some very close racing and it all began right here in Florida back in March. We started off Sebring this year with uh, just no expectations. Uh, the, it was my first Trans Am race. We showed up, there was 31 cars on the grid and some very fast competition. Kicking off a new year, it's a very historic track. We've never won there before, so super excited to get the season kicked off, hopefully right. And um, we, we've been fast there in the past and we we're hoping that sometimes, this time we can get over the hump. Away we go for 2018. Good start from Rafa Matos in the Camaro and Bufa Monti in the Ford. But trouble, damage to the bodywork of Shane Lewis. Rafa continues in the lead, but Mark Miller and Tony Bufamonte are in hot pursuit. Miller getting ever closer. Whoa, Rafa goes slightly wide and through goes Miller. Didn't need a second invitation. And Mark Miller wins race one, round one. For us, it was, it was a last minute uh, arrival at Sebring. Uh, we had just gotten the car a few days before. It was quite tight just to even be there, so I was just delighted to be on the grid. Away goes the TA class for 2018, led by the champion Ernie Francis Jr. Low check Dyson in a big battle all through the race. Chris Dyson all over the back now of Ernie Francis Jr., but Francis Jr. is gonna hold on and take the checkered flag here in Florida. Good job from Mark Bowden. He's picked up where he left off for the beginning of this year with another win in T83. Road Atlanta was the first round of the championship where we had some good competition battling us. Way they go then. Good start from Bernie Francis Jr. But Dyson's right there with him. These two have been side by side all race long as they come through the back markers. Dyson still holding on Francis. Oh, and a nudge! Dyson gets a nudge, but he recovers. Closing stages. Dyson still just ahead of Ernie Francis Jr. and does take the checkered flag. Ernie's a great racer. We had a race long battle that for the ages, and I think it's a sample of what's to come this year. Road Atlanta is an absolute stellar track for Mike Cope Racing in the 34. Last two years in a row, nobody else has even led a lap. Justin Haley and Bufamonte will lead the field for Mike Cope Racing. Matos waiting patiently in second place here. And through goes Misha Goikenberg on Bufamonte for third. Miller putting the pressure on and he's pushing Goikenberg and into the gravel he goes. Tough stop. Matos takes the win, his first ever in Trans Am. Yeah, Road Atlanta certainly a um, redemption time for me, you know, to get that win. Just the way I lost the race at Sebring, I passed the, the, the first place guy. At Homestead, I mean, we've been so fast. We were so fast at Road Atlanta, things just didn't work out. So everybody was really excited and uh, Homestead's a track that I really like to run. I knew it was Ernie's home track so we could make a big statement. Um, the surface is difficult there, and we came away with a podium finish and finished second. Round three, Miami, underway. The move by Francis Jr. on Lojack to pick up the lead. Lopez and Chris Tyson toe-to-toe -to -toe here. Chris Tyson, though, turned around again. Francis Jr. takes the win at home. Lojack settles for a podium. So, too, does Amy Ruman. That's another homegrown win for Shane Lewis in the Porsche in T83. So Homestead was a good, good solid race for us. We finally got back to the podium. I think we took a third there. 
Um, we had a good solid car. We were in contention for second. We, we gave it a good fight at the end, but just couldn't prevail. Homestead's a race I just like to forget altogether. Not one of our favorite tracks, to be, uh, to, to be honest. Uh, feeling going into Homestead was one of those, let's just try to keep the, the fenders on this thing and get out of here. Three flag waves in TA2 in Miami. Great start once again by the home man, Rafa Matos. Third round goes Tommy Sheehan and the 97 Camaro. And the dust comes Miller. He's out of contention now, way back. Shane Lewis looking good here at home, but just can't catch Rafa Matos. Rafa Matos makes it back-to-back -back wins for the three-dimensional team here in Florida. The final round here in Daytona are about to get underway. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more of the action from 2018 after this. Welcome back to Daytona for the final round of Trans Am 2018. All four classes represented, but back in June in Detroit, it was just TA2 in a double header. One of the most important weekends, for sure, because it's a double header and it's a very easy place to crash. We had high hopes going into Detroit. We unveiled a new car, a Ford Mustang for Stevens Miller Racing, and just disaster struck. Oh no! Miller hits the wall and takes another car with him. Not what the Berryman team wanted from Belle Isle at all. Detroit was really an amazing feeling, and I got to bounce it off the wall, so I got a little feeling of that too. Away we go in Detroit. Pupamonte leads them away from Gar Robinson in second. We're on board with Matos in third place. Everybody cleanly through. And there's a midfield spinner. That's Tommy Sheehan gets turned around and hits the wall. But through to the lead goes Rafa Matos. And Gar Robinson can't hold on, and it's Boo for Monte to take his first win. Race two underway, Gar Robinson leads. Good battle here again between Boo for Monte and Rafa Matos. Matos holding him off. Ethan Wilson in the Dodge Challenger, and he goes straight into the tire wall. And the Challenger is going nowhere. And it's Matos for a win and a podium in Detroit. We executed again perfectly. Second place in the first race, victory in the second one. Couldn't be better. Indianapolis, what a dream. What a dream for me, uh, racing open wheel cars forever. Always wanted to kiss the bricks there. Haven't been successful yet. Needed to try and go make that happen. Cross the famous bricks to go, and Rafa Matos leads the way. Legacy Jr. got a good lead here. Oh, that's a nudge from Rafa on Legacy Jr. as through goes Matos into the lead. Joe Napoleon over the curves and straight into Legacy. Well, Legacy Jr. knows he's been in a fight today. Here comes Legacy again. Bufamonte's with him and nudges him from behind on the last lap. Rafa Matos crosses the line, but he won't win the race. A jump start gives Jordan Buff the win. And at the halfway point in the season, Rafa Matos with a commanding 163 points for the Camaro. Then it's Tony Bufamonte in the Mustang. In third place, Keith Prochuk with 120 points. One behind is Jordan Buff after that win. I mean, rolling up to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you know, it, 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 is, it is the brickyard. Heading into Indy from Homestead after coming off the podium there, we had high hopes, you know, we were like, thought it was the turning point of the season for us. So we went out at Indy and uh, we made some last minute setup changes while well, they were kind of in the wrong direction. Round four, I flew in from New Jersey to Indianapolis. Uh, didn't know how I was going to go, pretty nervous starting from the back of the grid. What to do here at Indy then for the champion, the whole field in front of Francis Jr. Good start and lead for TA4 for Warren Dexter. Another place for Ernie as he continues to side his way through. He's up to third now. That's Loshak in the gravel. Through goes Ernie Francis on Pintaric. Kessler now leads at TA3. Loshak is out. Oh, Greasy! And that's turning round Pintaric. And here comes Francis. What an historic win from the back to the front.
Yeah, so Pittsburgh was new for everyone. Very difficult and challenging track. Hot day, uh, punishing race. Uh, Ernie Francis and I were feet away from each other the entire way. Uh, he snuck by me uh, in traffic on the last lap, which was unfortunate, but it was great to be back on the podium after Indy. And Lojak finally gets his first win of the year. So the halfway point in TA, Ernie Francis Jr. with a commanding 159 ahead of Chris Dyson in second place, David Pintarek in third, Lawrence Loshak right there with him in fourth place, Amy Ruman fifth. I like the track. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Definitely has a few nuances to it. Uh, lots of elevation change and fast uphill corners that really make you have to hit your marks. We're under green at Pittsburgh. Away goes TA3 and TA4 just behind. Sydney Lux using the power of the Viper to squeeze past Cipriani in the Ginetta. Dexter on course for another win in TA4. Sydney Lux wins ahead of Cipriani for an old girl podium. At the halfway point in TA3, leading Cipriani of Brazil leads the way ahead of Dave Ricci in second place, Mark Bowden in third. In the battle for TA4, it's also Janetta leading the way, but this time with Warren Dexter, 70 points to him, Stephen Davidson in second place, and Andrew Aquilante in third. We'll take a short break here on Trans Am 2018. We'll be right back with more. Welcome back to Daytona. There's no question, in Trans Am, the TA class is definitely one of the most hotly contested. And Ernie Francis Jr. and Lawrence Loshak have been going head-to-head -head all season. And the championship's still on the line as we come to the final round. Now, last time out, we saw Lawrence Loshak win in Pittsburgh. Let's find out how he got on and how Francis Jr. could defend in mid-Ohio. Round six at Mid-Ohio, the first ever time I did a pit stop in a race. I mean, I love that track. I got my first Trans Am win in TA2 there a couple years ago. Coming off of a win, qualifying, I just underestimated my opponents. Mid-Ohio, unfortunately, was a, uh, a rookie-esque performance for me. Uh, it was a two-corner event. I was probably a little too aggressive, and uh, it cost us. Here we go, then. Chris Dyson in the Mustang, Boris in the Challenger. Oh, and there's contact. Oh, and Dyson's come off worse, and he's lost a wheel, and that really could put pay to his title hopes. Fix leads the restart. No, oh, up goes Simon Craig and hits the tire barrier hard, and out he goes. Dexter takes the lead at TA4 and weaving more of his magic. Tough days racing at Mid Ohio, but in the end, in TA, it's Francis Jr. who wins again. Mark Bowden wins TA3, and another victory in TA4 for Warren Dexter. Fall Line Porsche was awesome. Uh, thanks to all the guys at Fall Line, uh, it was perfect. Mid Ohio has always been a great track for us. We've uh, we've won there in the past. We've got a lot of history there. Love hard close TA2 racing in Mid Ohio. One of my favorite tracks in the United States, and I came to that weekend thinking about performance only, that we had to qualify on pole position and make no mistakes in the race and win the race by the biggest margins possible. Well, you know, Rafa expects to win every race. He never wants to finish second at anything. We are green in Mid Ohio. Rafa Matos leads the field. And that's the Mustang of Roberto Sabato in the kitty litter. Goikeberg, three wheels, and a spin for the local man, Aaron Quine. And Goikenberg definitely out this time, just avoiding him, Ernie Francis Jr. Bufamonte will have to settle for second today, because once again, it's Rafa Matos who takes the checkered flag. Oh, Brandon Jones and Legacy. Legacy just getting the podium. For being 68 years old, I was very, very happy with this place at Mid-Ohio. We got to Road America. I was very excited. It's my home track. I just had a child. She's one month old at the time. Really happy, really excited to do well. Um, it looked like it was going to be dry, which is great because the past four races were wet. Um, so it was looking good. Coming down to turn five, John Atwell on board. Oh, and he spins it. And the Texan is two stepping out of control here. He hits the wall and picks up Daybreak. And that's Misha Goikenberg also getting loose, somehow avoiding everybody. Turn five, strikes again. Nicely done by the youngster, Matt Tiff, who takes the lead over Matos. 
Bufamonte and Scott Lagasse Jr. side by side. Lagasse holds the line. Oh no! Frank Delaney goes onto the grass and then takes out Bufamonte. Disaster! Restart. Ty Majeski gets the whole shot. Matos on the grass, but it's Ty Majeski who wins for Newman Wack. In the race, starting on the wet, you know, we were able to stay up front. But as the track was running up, I knew I had big problems behind me. And, you know, it was basically impossible to keep up with the Fords. Road America, the big one. First big crash we had in this car. And uh, it was a tough one. We ended up hopping in another car from Perry Hit and just put it around the track just to get some points. Well, we were out for redemption at Road America. I had my son with me, it was his first time there, so I really wanted to get a good result. It turned out to be just an epic battle with Boris said, and, and just a thrill. Over the hill they come then, to take the green flag. Dyson on the right, Loshak on the left. Oh, and there's a spinner. It's the Cadillac of David Pintarek, and he's also caught up with somebody else, and that ends his day. Cipriani and Bowden still going at it in TA3. Good racing. As goes Francis Jr., not a scheduled pit stop. And that's Lojak in the pits. They're all having problems. Good racing here between Daskalos and Lux for TA3. And Dyson, try as he might, just can't get past Boris said. And Boris takes the challenger to their first win for Weaver. You know, Ernie had a really bad weekend at Road America. Thank God he was okay, but you know, all of a sudden we were in the hunt. Everybody all of a sudden was in the hunt. Boris said then leads them away at the Glen. Francis Jr. alongside him. Three does not go into one. Lojak and Francis have to give. Boris said holds the lead. Nice and smooth by Francis Jr. to take the lead over Said. Good battle here in TA3. Bowden putting big pressure on Radisic. Oh no! That was Francis Jr. slowing down. Greasy, nicely done for the lead. Set is out. Lojak on his way for a podium shortly here. In comes Fix. Here we go to the line. Greasy's got it. His teammates swirling to second. Uh, you know, I took the lead with 15 laps to go. And for 15 laps, I had to be perfect and took the win there. So Watkins Glen was amazing. But Watkins Glen, it was really exciting. It's such a historic track, and I'd always been excited to race there. And when we dropped on track, we were fast right away, and I was kind of surprised that I had done better than I had done all year. What better medicine for us than coming off a bad finish at Road America, going to Watkins Glen. We'd won there the year pre previously. We were excited about getting back on that high-speed track. Uh, usually the second half of the season, the 34 really comes to life, and we're gonna put a pressure on for the championship. Again, Electrical Gremlins there, hard luck, another tough finish for the 34. Where we go on the Glen is TA2, Matos in second place. Bouncing over the curves. Good move by Shane Lewis on the inside of Ethan Wilson. Matos on Procha. Procha can't make the chicane and has to go straight on. Good dicing this. Oh, and that's Bufamonte out again. Legacy out! And through goes Matos. Another win for Rafa. Watkins Glen was a very important weekend because we had a big lead. Doesn't matter if first, second, or third place, or fourth or fifth, we needed to finish the race. And uh, I was quite happy with second place, and uh, that, that victory felt on our lap. We're on the road to the finale in Daytona. Lots of twists and turns still to come. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. The Trans Am Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Pirelli. Power is nothing without control. And by AEM, engineered to outperform. Welcome back to Daytona for the final round of Trans Am as the car's getting ready for another run at this iconic circuit. But Trans Am's all about running at iconic circuits. Watkins Glen was last time out, then we headed to VIR.
VRR is awesome. It's really my favorite track. I, it's a track that I had run before, and I love all the different kinds of corners and challenges that VIR offers. VIR is one of America's most spectacular venues, meandering through the trees with a combination of mid-speed corners and a long straight with emphasis on flowing and rhythm in order to get a fast lap around VAR. We first turn our attention to TA2, where Brazilian Rafa Matos has dominated the season since his first win at Road Atlanta. The likes of Tony Bufamonte and Keith Prochek have kept him honest. Coming into VIR, Rafa Matos with 254 ahead of Tony Bufamonte with 196. Keith Prochuk still third with 152. On to qualifying in perfect conditions, but not the perfect start for the championship leader. A broken throttle cable for Rafa Matos and overdriving a little for Scott Legacy Jr. I may have driven it off the racetrack a little bit, but uh, just two tires, only two tires. But uh, it, costs, it costs a little bit of time, so I came down pit road and uh, there's still a couple minutes left in practice and, or in qualifying and was able to get one more lap in and it worked. Pole position then for Scott Legacy Jr. Tony Ave alongside him. Luis Philippe Montour on the second row with Tony Bufamonte. Keith Prochek, Ethan Wilson on row three. And Rafa Matos will have to start from the fourth row. A rolling start as always as we go on board with Tony Ave in second place. Legacy Jr. getting way well. And just behind, Rafa Matos battling for fourth position with Montour in the number 30. Rafa gets a good start, but Bufamonte, his only real opponent, going off with suspension damage and out of the race. And it wasn't long before the leader himself, Lagsy Jr., did a bit of grass tracking, but manages to hold it all together and get back on track. Rafa Matos, though, soon pounced and was through on Lagasy Jr., and that meant it was Ave, Matos, and Lagasy. But not long after, Matos was through on the leader, Ave, and so too was Scott Lagasy Jr. So Matos leads from Lagasy Jr., and then Ave third. With so much debris on track, that brought out a full course caution, and the restart was a chance for Legacy, and he took it on the inside, going into turn one on Matos. Brilliantly done for the man who was denied last time out at Watkins Glen. He goes past Matos, and so too Tony Arbe. So, in the closing laps, it was Legacy, Arbe in second place, and Matos in third. Matos settling then, as through went the 25, but it was all Legacy looking for his first win in the series. And while Ave handed him all the way to the checkered flag, Legacy Jr. gets his first win, but more importantly, Rafa Matos takes the championship. But very sportingly, still has time to congratulate Scott Legacy Jr. with that win. Tony Ave in second place, Rafa Matos third, and the championship. Luis Philippe Montour fourth, and Ethan Wilson fifth. Congratulations to our TA2 champion for 2018, Rafa Matos, with two rounds to go, wins the title 10 years after his Indy Lights title. Fantastic day, fantastic. I never imagined I would come to race to go, to come in here, over here and win the championship. I guess Lucky was on our side again. Uh, and, you know, it's just a, a dream come true. Hopefully next year we'll do it again. We turn our attention now to TA and TA3. And going into VIR, Ernie Francis Jr. of Florida leads TA. And Alini Cipriani in the Janetta from Brazil leads TA3. Ernie Francis Jr. has been the man to watch all season long. 218 points. Lawrence Loshak, though, has had a brilliant second half of the season and is now on 190 points ahead of Chris Dyson and David Pintaro. TA3, Ali Cipriani holding on to a lead, but Mark Bowden, David Rishi, and Tom Herb are right there with her. In qualifying, Chris Dyson was third place in the Ford Mustang. Just ahead of him, Boris said in the Dodge Challenger, but pole position, Lawrence Loshak in the Chevrolet Camaro. So exciting here at the end of the season, trying to close this gap uh, from the defending champion, Ernie Francis Jr. Uh, getting pulled gets us three valuable bonus points to close up. Uh, now it's only 25 points. I told you we're coming for you, Aaron. Low Shack, Forrest said on the front row then for TA, Chris Dyson and Paul Fix on row two, Amy Ruman and David Pintaric row three, and Tommy Dreesey, last time out winner, Simon Gregg on row four. Rolling start on board with Boris said. Chris Dyson gets a better start going into turn one and challenges for second place and does just about take it away from Boris said. And in the lead, Lawrence Loshak. Meanwhile, TA3, a brilliant start. The straight line speed of the Dodge Viper of Sydney Lux getting ahead of Mark Bowden, but Bowden under braking sorts that out and overtakes her. Sadly for the championship leader, a puncture for Alini Cipriani in the Ginetta. 
She is out of the race, giving Mark Bowden a really great opportunity. On board with Set again as he challenges Chris Dyson for second place. But a red flag when the Mustang of Tim Rubright went out. That caused a restart. Boris said, restarting in second position, chasing down Lawrence Loshak. Good battle in TA3. Sydney Lux just ahead of Kingsland in third. But it wasn't long before Randy Kingsland was through into second place in TA3. Boris said, chasing down Loshak in the closing stages. And Josh Hurley doing a brilliant job in third, having replaced the underweather Jim McAleese. Ernie Francis Jr. going slow in the 98 and being lapped, in fact. And at the checkered flag, it was Lawrence Loshak with another victory. Boris said second place and Josh Hurley brilliantly in third ahead of Amy Ruman and David Pintarek in fifth. Brilliant stuff then by Lawrence Loshak. I knew I had to get a W. I knew I had it, you know, I needed to win to turn, you know, to have a chance for the championship. I needed to hit all my marks. Um, and of course, the, the team just did a great job, gave me an absolute rocket ship, and just I knew I couldn't make any mistakes. More importantly, it puts the TA Championship on a knife edge. Early Francis Jr. continues to lead with 230, but Lawrence Loshak is now just five points behind with Chris Dyson in third place, Pentaric in fourth. It's the long and winding road to the finale here in Daytona. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more action from Trans Am, presented by Pirelli, after this. Welcome back to Daytona in Florida for the final round of the Trans Am series, presented by Pirelli for 2018. Now, before we head to Daytona, let's look back at the penultimate round, which took place at the Circuit of the Americas in Texas. Circuit of the Americas, classic track in the U.S. Now, Formula One track, everyone's excited to go there. Hasn't been good to us in the past, haven't run well there. Uh, looking for different things this time around. The 3.14 mile Herman Tilke design circuit is a twisty start, then leading to a long, long straight before the final stadium section and 20 turns in all. Here's the grid, Bufamonte and Gar Robertson on the front row, then Shane Lewis and Misha Goikenberg, Legacy Jr. and John Atwell, Montour and Rafa Matos the champion on row four. Rolling start then for the Muscle Car Challenge from Kota. Away they go, up the 133 feet. That is turn one at Kota. Good start from Shane Lewis. On board with Tony Bufamonte. Oh, Bufamonte gets turned around. And a big melee at the top of the hill involving the pole man and several others. Shane Lewis leads from Gar Robinson. Misha Goikenberg in third place, but also casualties there. Matos, Legacy Jr. And the safety car came out. But then Shane Lewis, the leader, also in trouble. Mechanical problems for him. He too was out of the race. More drama into turn 12, this time involving the number 43, that's Sabato and Kurt Voigt. Number 43, Sabato, throwing up smoke as Misha Goikenberg goes for the lead on Gar Robinson. Robinson would attack back at him as these two went at each other. Here we go through turn two. And a brilliant effort from Gar Robinson. Both of them desperate for a victory. Gar Robinson, of course, from San Antonio in Texas, and the two Camaros went at it for the entire race. Gar Robinson taking the lead, Goikerberg would take it back. And then at the finish, a photo finish by just 0 .064, the closest finish in Trans Am history. Confirmation then, Gar Robinson wins at home. Misha Goikerberg, his best result at second. And Dylan McAvern in third place. Ethan Wilson fourth, and Projo in fifth. I've won championships, I've won Indy, I've won Daytona, I've won Detroit, I've won everywhere. But this is really, really special. And boy, does he deserve it. The man from San Antonio, Gar Robinson, wins at the Circuit of the Americas. Going up to Coda, we had a month break. It gave us a lot of time to get the car sorted out and figured out. We did a lot of testing. We felt really confident in the car, but it was going to be a tight race with a five-point gap between second place and me. You know, Coda was a special event for us, obviously. Um, it was going to be my 100th Trans Am start. 
And uh, so to get that, that accomplishment for the team and uh, my parents and my family and myself, it was a pretty big deal and, and everybody it was great to us. In TA4, Warren Dexter now has a massive 175 to Stephen Davidson's 111 and Todd napier Alaski in third. The season's been going about as perfect as it can go so far. After this race weekend, the championship will be ours. So that'll be kind of a breath of relief. The grid then for TA, Ernie Francis Jr. alongside his arch nemesis, Lawrence Loshak, Chris Dyson and Paul Fix, row two, Dreesy and Zed on row three, and Pintarek and Gray. Here we go then. On the inside line, it's Ernie Francis Jr. leading up the hill. A drag race between Chris Dyson and Lawrence Slochak around the outside. Dyson will come back at him on the inside as they go through the apex of one. But it's going to be Lochak who holds on to second place. Dyson settling for third. Away goes TA3 and a good start from Leuenberger on the outside. Sidney Lux holds the line through turn one. Very wide Leuenberger and he's lost ground. Daskalos picks up the lead as they head into turn two. And Ernie Francis Jr. cruising in T8. And well, he might be because in the background, Lawrence Loshak is slowing. And that's motor problems for the man who was just five points behind at the start of this weekend. Disaster for Loshak. Good start from Ryan Dexter, the 17-year-old, holding his own. And in fact, challenging Daskalos for the lead in T8-3. Great stuff by the 17-year-old. What a way to start. An older brother, 21-year-old Warren Dexter, leading TA4 ahead of Shane Lewis. Dexter passing Cipriani in the other Janetta on his way to victory in TA4. And Ernie Francis Jr. takes another victory after what's been a tough few races for him. Chris Dyson second place, and Tommy Greasy, the West champion in third. Amy Rubin in her 100th appearance takes fourth place. So that sets up the grand finale at Daytona International Speedway. We'll take a short break right back with all the action from the final round. Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway for the final round of Trans Am 2018 presented by Pirelli. Now, two of the championships have already been decided. In TA2, Rafa Matos has won that championship and TA4 was won by Warren Dexter in the Tiny Ginetta. So that means that the TA Championship and TA3 are up for grabs. One race, one chance here at Daytona. I mean, there was a slim chance to win. Um, you don't, again, you don't want to wish any bad to your opponents or anything like that, but hey, it's racing. Um, it's not over till it's over. Uh, Ernie could have as bad of a weekend that we had at Coda, you know, so we press on. Sadly for Loshak, it was over before they even got started at Daytona. In qualifying, Loshak coming to a halt. His teammate, on the other hand, much more dramatically out. Hitting the high bank walls at Daytona at high speed. Uh, once you take the green flag, we pretty much win the championship. So that's a pretty awesome feeling and a big stress relief off our shoulders. So I think uh, once that happens, we're going to have some fun out there and play around with these guys and see if we can take home another win. We are exciting, but we know that it's a long race and tough race, and Mark is going to do all his, he, that he can to finish the race in fourth. Let's try not to make happen so, so I can, can celebrate in the end of the race. I'm excited. I love being here at Daytona. I love racing with Trans Am. If, uh, if I finish second in the championship, I um, couldn't be happier for Aileen. She's uh, earned it. We've got a really good car, and we'll see how things play out. My goal is to finish ahead of Ethan Wilson, who's in third right now. So that's, that's the goal. I, I'd love to finish on the podium, which would be great, but yeah, we're, we're thinking points here, and Ethan Wilson is the target. Well, you know, I clinched the Rookie of the Year award earlier, and I'm really proud of that. I have a great Stevens Miller racing team that made that uh, possible. And, and now I'm right there in P3 in points. It's kind of unbelievable when I come in to the first race not knowing how it would turn out to really have a chance to be on the podium for the series points at the end of the year. I'm excited about the opportunity, but I realize I've still got to stay steady in the race. 
Here at Daytona, the course is the classic 24-hour course on the infield through the first hairpin at four, then another one at six, then back onto the oval for turns eight and nine, down to the bus stop, slowing things down, and then back onto the oval for the final two turns here at Daytona. The grid then for the final TA race sees Tony Ave in pole position alongside him, Ernie Francis Jr., then Chris Dyson and RJ Lopez, David Fintarek and Amy Ruman, Shane Lewis and AJ Hendrickson on row four. So everybody ready for the last hurrah here from Daytona? We'll take a short break, we'll be right back. The Trans Am Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Pirelli. Power is nothing without control. And by Three Dimensional Services Group. Prototype. Production. Proven. So here we go then for the final round from Daytona International Speedway. All four classes involved. And Tony Ave will lead them out, followed by Ernie Francis Jr. racing at home here in Florida. Rolling start as ever, Ave leads them across the line in TA, on board with Chris Dyson, jostling for third position as they dive into the infield. Here comes TA2, Bufamonte with Rafa Matos on the outside as they too dive into turn one. Matos heavy on the braking, but loses out to both Chris Dyson and Bufamonte. And here comes TA3 and TA4 on board with Mark Bowden. Needs to stay in contention with Alini Cipriani. And here is the lone female Brazilian in TA3 leading the championship at the moment. Will she take it? On board again with Rafa Matos. Already alongside Bufamonte and ahead of Tony Bufamonte goes Rafa Matos. High and wide on the banking. Very brave up there. Meanwhile, Francis Junior and Chris Dyson are having a dice on the infield. Dyson determined to finish his season on a high. And past Ernie Francis Junior he goes. Mark Miller back in action and already up to third place as we join Mark Bowden. And he and Jason Daskalos going wheel to wheel in TA3. David Pintarek past. Ernie Francis Jr. and the Cadillac is flying here at Daytona. Amy Rumin also 101 for her. Can she make it turn into a good weekend here at the final round of 2018? Tim Kesman, he's also battling for honors in TA3. But Ernie Francis Jr. marching surely on to victory in the TA class. It's been a brilliant year, five wins in all. Plenty of restarts, plenty of dramas here at Daytona. No one expected this, though. Ave pulling out of the lead and out of the race as Amy Ruman gets a brilliant restart. And that really opened up the TA class. And a great three-way battle also between Lopez, Ruman, and David Pintarek. Amy Ruman on board with her as we go on the infield. Onto the grass goes Lopez. Pintarek ahead of both of them. And through goes Ruman, nicely done. Squeezes her way through past RJ Lopez. Closing stages, and Amy Ruman loses her door on the driver's side. More drama also for Mark Bowden. Kurt Voigt spins in front of him. He goes onto the grass. And if he can't get that started, he hands Alini Cipriani the championship. Last time through the bus stop, Bufamonte out of control. Matos trying everything he can. Bufamonte somehow holds on and will take the final two corners and the checkered flag. A dramatic finish to the season, as you'd expect. And David Pintarek takes his first ever win in Trans Am ahead of RJ Lopez and Amy Ruman somehow makes it to third, Hinkle in four. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm walking on air right now. I think I'm gonna, I, I, the whole year's been, been perfect now. I, this is, couldn't be better. 
What a day for David Pintarin and his Cadillac team. He kisses the ground in celebration. And it's all smiles in TA. In TA2, Tony Bufamonte finally finishes the year on a high. Mark Miller back on the podium in second place. And Luis Philippe Montour of Canada takes third with Matos finishing in fourth place. So celebrations for Bufamonte. Didn't get the championship, but he can celebrate and enjoy his winter on a high. In TA3, Tim Kesman gets the win over Tom Herb. Marco Radisic is on the podium in third place, his first podium. And Alini Cipriani, sixth place, is good enough for the title. So Tim Kesman celebrates with Tom Herb and Marco Radisic on the podium in TA3. And overall in TA, only Francis Jr. finishes on 279 points. Lawrence Loshak keeping him honest till the final round in second place. Chris Dyson third and Pintaric with that win in fourth. I mean, the race didn't go how we planned, but uh, the season did. Uh, got our second TA championship, our fifth ever Trans Am championship. So I uh, couldn't have a better year. Uh, it was really, really awesome. Confirmation in TA3, Alini Cipriani winning the title, with Mark Bowden not finishing by just five points. Bowden second, and Tom Herb in third place, David Rishi in fourth. I couldn't be happier, you know, so I just went to the track, Falcon and finish the race. I want to celebrate with my family and all my team, and I wish my baby could be here with us to celebrate, but we're gonna celebrate tomorrow at home. The smile says it all, and congratulations to all four class winners. But that concludes our coverage of the 2018 Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli. We'll be back to do it all again in 2019. Francis Jr. takes another victory. Rafa Matos of Brazil. Rafa Matos, the world at his feet. Greenlight Television and our entire crew. I'm Jonathan Green, and this has been a presentation of the CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.